It's a double flashback episode, as we look way back to when Beta first met Alpha, and more recently, how Alpha found her brand new substitute daughter. It's a very Whisper-centric episode, on this week's The Walking Dead, Season 10, Episode 2. We are the end of the world. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome back to our review of The Walking Dead. So, of course, spoilers on your way, and do want to remind you about our quick jump index system. Right in the description below, we'll have this entire review titleized, codified, time stamped. Jump to the end of the review first, watch the beginning last, watch this review in any order you'd like. And uh, before we kick things off, do want to, of course, mention, yeah, I still got the digital poster. Ran out yesterday to get my brand new poster, and they kind of messed it up. The uh, resolution was horrible, and it was the wrong paper, so going to have to wait a little bit longer to get my new one. Just, just to give you guys a heads up on what's going on. Anyway, let's jump right into this week's episode, which, you know, I have to say, Coming into it, not super excited. I uh, was really hoping to get the whole action, the whole meetup, especially after the end of last week's episode, we had the big stare down between Carol and Alpha, and we're like, man, it's going to go on. And that looks like next week that that is actually going to go on. This week, uh, yeah, double flashback uh, to <laughs> kind of an interesting way of doing it, of sort of catching up to where the whispers have been all the way up and to this moment, in some ways, very much like the first episode uh, that we had of this season with the falling satellite and, and the effects of that and everything included. So the more recent maneuvers of the Whispers, plus our little extra flashback, which goes back to look at how Alpha first met Beta and how Lydia was still having difficulties transitioning over to a Whisper walking with the dead lifestyle. Um, and overall, I think the episode did well. I was a lot more excited about it by the time that it was all done. Um, I think the, the pacing was really nice. It was really interesting seeing uh, Alpha's and Beta's first interaction. And then tying that whole, the whole story in around the sisters. More specifically, the sister that lost her child at the end of last season. Well, uh, uh, episode or two before the end. Uh, when we had the baby set down in the field in front of Hillside and walked away. This is, of course, the mother of that baby, and we're seeing the effects of that kind of loss, which is well tied into Alpha's own loss of Lydia, and in some ways how the sister did more than Alpha did since she was willing to sacrifice her child for the Whispers, whereas Alpha lies about killing Lydia uh, to the group, and of course, that is Cree going to create some conflict going forward, and a little bit between her and Beta. So there were some good dynamics going on. Uh, I said, I think the pacing was, was done really well, and overall, I thought that it was a good episode. Not, like I said, what I was hoping to see, but I think satisfying in its own sense, and showing certainly overall some of the cracks that are starting to develop within the Whisper group, specifically after running into our communities in Hillside and then seeing, oh my God, there is a life possible beyond the dead. So, uh, so again, I think a good, effective episode catching up where, um, where Alpha is, where the Whispers are, and, you know, we're seeing where not only some revenge and some cover-up that Alpha's going to have to do because <laughs> can't let the group find out that Lydia's still alive when Alpha said that she was dead. Um, so there's going to be conflicts with that as well as further fractures as they further uh, uh, encounter the communities and deal with them. You're going to have some whispers really wanting to break off, which of course is going to create a lot of trust issues even in Hillside and the rest of the communities. Can you trust these whispers that wish to break off in the group, or is that another infiltration? Is that going to create uh, another uh, heads on pike situation? All right, so a big part of the episode deals with the first meeting between Alpha and Beta, and for that, our flashback goes 
way back to the early days of Alpha uh, and Lydia, now walking with the dead, but obviously still a very early stage. They are alone, it's just the two of them, and Lydia hasn't quite gotten over her fears of meandering down with flesh-eating zombies, which can sort of make sense. And I like the sort of setup that they had. I mean, they're covered, they're drenched over. Uh, Lydia has headphones on to kind of push away the sounds of the dead, which would be, I think, an important thing for a young child to try and sort of overcome. So I like that setup. Um, but of course, you know, still early days, dangerous world, poor lady caught in the car. Lady, don't kick them back. Go around the car. Why did you try to come in when they were, I mean, you're just opening things up. Anyway, she's a victim. Her whole purpose is to have her face eaten very grossly. Nicely done. Good effects, uh, uh, makeup effects as always with this show. Uh, <laughs> but that causes Lydia a little bit of panic, of course, which breaks the whole hiding amongst the the, uh, the walker scene and forces Alpha and Lydia to, you know, run out, escape, and they find their way to, looks like a drug recovery center. At first, for a moment, when we saw the padded walls later on, I was thinking some sort of mental institution, and certainly plenty of crazy writing on the wall, though that does seem to be uh, uh, post-apocalyptic. A lot of that seeming to be uh, uh, beta, uh, I think, in fact. It seems to at least relate to a lot of his mindset. So, from what we see from the pictures later on, this appears to be some sort of drug recovery center where uh, they are able to uh, find some refuge and, of course, encounter Beta, who at this stage is just a big scary guy in a mask. Uh, from what we hear, he has been damaged, he's been hurt by an attack from walkers, which is why he has his face covered up. And a great... The, the, the early establishments, I think, of the relationship between Alpha and Beta really, I think, starts to set the whole tone for the whispers to come from. Uh, because what we see with the first encounter is the two of both Alpha and Beta dealing with each other from positions of strength. You know, while Alpha is asking for refuge, she is also like, I'm not to be trifled with, I will mess up anyone, you come near my daughter, I will mess you up, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, Beta, of course, big guy swinging around the, uh, the machete here. We, we're, we're seeing these, these two dealing with each other from positions of strength. They are both alphas in their own particular world, now seeing how they're going to interact with each other. Um, even when we get to the point where, where Beta asks Alpha what is her name is, and she does the, I have no names, names tie us back to the past, we are survivors, we can understand each other on a primal level, which again, it starts to set up their whole sort of relationship. And then we see from Beta's standpoint, the effects of living in this world has, has not been kind to him. Or maybe more in the sense of what Alpha says is that this is a world that Beta was designed for, just sort of waiting for the world to catch up. And what is his memorable line there? I like the sounds of the dead. I don't want them ever to stop. So we are seeing here two individuals both connected to the dead and in a way sort of in their own senses, living amongst them, just not quite in a formalized manner. So I love how they did the whole sort of setup and first sort of introductions between these two. We are not seeing two weak encounters. We are seeing two strong beings that are trying to find how their relationship is going to mesh in with the world around them. And that really comes to a fore in our Seat of the Week! for this week and that is of course uh the the alpha beta dual fight uh, and again it's a it's a very nicely set up scene we have alpha kind of started wandering the halls we're seeing all the crazy writing that's on the wall it's the end of the world why am i the only one here why am i still alone uh we are the end i am the end of the world i mean which again plays on a little bit later on. So we're seeing these kind of insights into Beta's mindset. I think that's what all of these writings on the wall are really sort of keying into. Um, and then when Alpha encounters the group of walkers in the hallway, we are of course seeing is as much as she can live amongst the dead, she has no problem fighting them and taking them out. We saw that kind of briefly in the beginning uh, with their escape into this uh, the drug recovery center. Um, 
And now, as soon as they come around, I mean, without a pause, without a thought, just <clears throat> going right into the head stab. So again, it's, it's, it, it's a beautiful way to see how Alpha works with the dead, uh, but also knows that she is the Alpha, and they are definitely not. They are, they are the herd, the guardians. They are the ones that wander with them and protect them, uh, but she will not stand them to attack her. So it was sort of a great establishing scene right there. But of course, quickly I kind of overwhelmed. Uh, I mean, she probably could have fought herself off, but it's a perfect sense to have Beta then step in at that moment. And a great first shot where we see the zombie head like facing towards camera and Beta does that stab and the knife sort of pops right out in the face. You know, again, from Alpha's perspective right there. Just, just a cool intro we're walking in to do some zombie killing right now and then they go on they pair up perfectly taking out all of the walkers that are all around it's a quick scene it's efficient it's beautifully done and establishes again the strengths and the similarities between these two well we saw the dueling strengths before and here we're seeing in combat they naturally mesh which, which unto itself would have been a great scene, but then they continue it where Alpha just does her drop to the ground and starts pulling the body parts across in order to make the buckets of soup to cover and, 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 and uh, you know, disguise themselves. And so we get a little kind of insight and discussion between the two of them there, how it's not just about covering yourself with the blood and covering else. No, it's not just like that. You got to act like them. You got to think like them. And how did they think? nothing. They think nothing. That's exactly how you've got to get in. So we're, we're not only seeing how their strengths are meshing, but we're seeing how, in a way, their philosophies in living amongst this world uh, uh, really meshes and, 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 and comes forward with. And there we start to get the births of the Alpha and Beta, you know, as, as Beta pulls apart the chest. Good job, big man, or B. That we weren't supposed to have names. It's not a name. It's a letter. And if you're B, then I'm A. So again, Alpha establishing herself early on as the Alpha. She is the, she is the leader. He is the strength, and she is the leader. It's a perfect kind of combination, and it really sets that up there. And also, beginning with the A's and the B's, it sort of dwells into that comment that she had made uh, earlier in the hallway the episode about we can understand each other on a primal level not needing names this primal alpha beta uh, relationship as you have amongst the animal kingdom very much coming into four here so it's a beautiful way of not only having a great fight sequence but really paring down the philosophy and mesh between these two characters and lays the foundation where later on this this is where they bond the later on scene is just sort of wrapping up, clearing all of the extraneous stuff away and, and making that bond uh, clear and precise. Now, of course, while the two of them are showing their strengths, we have Lydia in, this scenes all, in these scenes also trying to find her own strengths, trying to live up to her mom's expectations. And the, the dynamics that we catch really throughout all of this, the, these far flashbacks, um, between Alpha and Lydia. Look, Alpha shows herself in these scenes as being a caring mom. When Lydia's in trouble in the beginning, she breaks away from the herd, grabs her, and finds a place. Yells her afterwards, don't do that again. But all of her acts are very protective, but only for so far. It's like, I love you, but I push you away. I love you, but I push you away. That, that, that's kind of the whole thing. I mean, when... Uh, when Lydia has the scene with a bunny, and it's time to lay down, and Alpha's handing her the bunny, and she's like, no, I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want to sleep with a bunny. I don't want to have that. I don't, I don't want to feel afraid. Obviously, bunny, comfort animal, helps you feel safe. So I don't need the bunny. I, want to, I don't want to be afraid anymore. I want to be like you. Which, for Alpha, a very, yeah, this is it. My daughter, she's going to be just like me. That, that's awesome but immediately throws it back in her face in the sense that, but if you ever can't be, I'm going to leave you behind. And that's the dynamic that we have. It's love, but a willingness to toss. And that seems something that, that 
Alpha really continues to reinforce uh, uh, with Lydia throughout all these flashbacks and then tying into the stuff later on is that willingness to, yes, I love you and protect you and you are my daughter and we have this connection. But I also have no problem pushing you away. And, and if that push away is an attempt to make her stronger, I think maybe that might be her philosophy is like, you know, if I threaten to leave you, that's going to inspire you to not be scared. It's, it, Alpha's got a really messed up parenting style. <laughs> Again, it's a lot of, I love you and hate you. I love you and hate you. Uh, which, of course, inspires Lydia to do the whole, I'm going to douse myself with blood and go walk up to the walkers to prove that I am not afraid, that we are all monsters, as she repeats over and over again, heading up. Um, which is nice. I mean, it's good that she wants to be like mom. Dangerous to do it by yourself, and also when you have an overprotective mom who doesn't know that you're gone, that's going to cause her to run out and find you, which gives us our great final sort of encounter with Alpha and Beta and Lydia, because, of course, in order to find Lydia, Alpha has to cross into Beta's territory where he said not to go, uh, where he, she, of course, finds the photographs and the rubbed out faces. Beta doesn't want to see himself, and we can assume that it's probably him. Every other picture is fine, but we see that one with the two faces scratched out, which is important. Because, of course, having crossed the line, Alpha's attacked by a walker, but the walker that she's attacked by is the one that Beta is protecting. And again, we're seeing this further connection of Beta in with the dead. Uh, and, and, and even this whole scene, we've already seen the, the bond that is established between Alpha and Beta. Here, it's the getting rid of the old life is really what this scene is all about. I mean, is, even as Lydia comes in amongst the whole fight and she screams at Beta, she's trying to save you. Which is really what she's, she's doing. Beta is right now just, just existing here, guarding the dead. When in some, when, from Alpha's standpoint, the dead should be guarding us. Um, and who is this person that she is, she is protecting? Hard to say some relation to Beta. Um, is it his brother? It's entirely possible. I mean, we don't see any faces. We can't see any sort of relation there. Uh, could it be a, a lover or a boyfriend? That is also possible. It's not his son, uh, because there's a very clear discussion later on between Alpha and Beta where Alpha mentions out how you will never understand the pain it is to, to, to lose a child, to, to sacrifice a child. So this doesn't seem to be Beta's son. So I'm guessing most likely brother, possible boyfriend, lover. I mean, you know, it's a changing world, could be anything. Uh, but definitely someone that Beta feels the need to protect, to not abandon. Uh, which is, again, now gives us our final birth. We saw the meet between the two of them. We saw the establishment of the A and the B to be the Alpha and the Beta. And now we see the whole covering mask bit. Uh, because this Beta does not want to leave this gentleman. Alpha's line is, you don't have to. You can take him with you. So that's the carving off of the face, of the half face, which becomes Beta's mask. Uh, we do get the nice little shot there of uh, right beforehand of, of uh, Alpha actually being able to pull up the mask. You know, before when she attempted to do that, that was the kind of pushback moment. Oh, you're going to have to leave tomorrow. But here we are seeing the, um, you know, the, the, the openness that Beta has to Alpha. Yes, you may look. And we don't get to see as an audience what the damage is if it's significant. He said that it was done by a zombie attack, but I also wonder if this might have been by his brother, lover, friend, whoever that is that he is protecting. Um, might have. He got bit, turned, they were close, and then he attacked him and was able to, to push and fight off. Was that the aspect? Again, we don't know, and not entirely important. He is damaged by this world, and yet he is made for this world. He is made, in many ways, 
the perfect blend between the human and the walker. Uh, we see it a lot in the later on when he is rounding up uh, uh, walkers, how he can howl and move and have that strength, but just natural. It's, he, he is a natural whisperer uh, in many ways. And that's what we really kind of finish establishing in this scene is not only their connection uh, and the face that Beta carries, uh, but also how much they have really been designed for this apocalyptic world. And we're in effect just sort of waiting for the world to catch up with them. Now the more recent flashbacks are really focused on our pair of sisters um, who seem to be relatively new to the group. There's a discussion later on about you can't endanger this now that we've found the place. Uh, and, and certainly from Alpha's standpoint seem to have some sort of gift in uh, gathering guardians around with them, which is why she sends them off uh, with Beta to the, the gathering of group. But I have to wonder if this is really a smart choice, being that one of the sisters is the one who uh, uh, left her child up at Hilltop uh, as he's shown of the strength of the Whispers and what they're willing to do. Also, baby crying, got, driving guardians to them. You know, you can't lose all of the group. Uh, and, and not really, and, and it's really, it's that, that parent-child dynamic that a lot of this is is basically reflecting on. The effects on this one sister of losing her child sort of reflected on to Alpha losing Lydia. Though, well, interestingly enough, both are still alive. Though everyone thinks both are dead. Just again, kind of an interesting one because the baby was sort of was picked up and rescued out into Hilltop uh, and of course Lydia wasn't actually killed by Alpha as much as the group believes. So, I mean, in some ways, it's kind of an interesting dynamic that it's the effects of what you think happened as opposed to maybe what actually happened. But how are you supposed to know? Um, and like I said, sending off the sisters is a questionable tactic. The only thing that I can guess is, is, is now that it's post-winter and we have spring returning, that this is what's you know spring is new life that this is what is bringing up the one sister the, the mom sister uh for these feelings because obviously they've gone through the entire winter without her really kind of freaking out and and acting enough in a way that alpha feels confident sending them out with beta to go gather guardians so my guess is the one sister she hasn't had that kind of post loss madness effect until now with the sun coming down and the warmth of spring and life returning that's sort of my guess they don't really say anything but i believe that's sort of implied that that is what's sort of spurring this whole memory of the loss of the child and 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 creating conflicts in i mean what she starts crying and that requires beta to go and stab a couple of walkers in order to save her life um Though, and even that is kind of an interesting idea since when he brings her back in order, he's like, you're going to pay for that. Brings her up. Um, it looks like they're about to kill her anyway. They're about to sacrifice her. So I guess is it style-wise, I'm going to save you, but I will bring you back to camp and have you ritually killed there and join the Guardians at that point. Kind of, kind of an interesting choice there. I'm not sure if it was done from a logical standpoint, this is the way the, the, the whispers work, or if it's just trying to add the more dramatic moments. Maybe a little bit more towards later, because of course, as she's about to be uh, axed out, that's when we Alpha say, Alpha says, no, bring her to the darkened place and I will be waiting for her. So is this something that has happened before? Is this regularly a... a, a, a Thing where new whispers kind of break down and they have to be pulled into the fold, shown the strength of Alpha, the embrace. It certainly works, at least temporarily. But even then, when we have the discussion of the sisters, sort of an odd dynamic there of Alpha saying, it's like when she say, she told me when I laid my baby down, she didn't cry at all. She's so into the nothing. I feel nothing. I am so much of a walker. That's sort of an inspiring speech. I don't know. I mean, we don't see everything that happens inside the darkened area. We just sort of uh, hear about it afterwards. But again, it's 
whatever it is, it works, whether it's just the fear of being killed, that you're going to be sacrificed, and instead you are embraced by the leader and said that you are one of us and, and your sacrifice was a great thing. And I mean, it's just sort of a cult mentality that sort of gives her that, that, that moment of like, I've been accepted, I feel so much better, everything is fine. Um, so it works. I mean, and I guess as a leader, you got to try and make that point. And that she tells Beta, too. You know, Beta's all concerned. She's lost. As soon as the baby was gone, we lost her. And she's gone, and she's just going to be a threat to everybody else. Which may be true, and end up actually being true. Uh, but I guess from leader from an alpha standpoint, fine. We have to give her the chance to embrace. If not, I'll sacrifice and skin her myself. It's a nice thing for a leader. I'm going to protect you, but if you mess up, again, we're looking back at the whole dealings with Lydia. I want you to be like me, but if you're not, I will leave you in a heartbeat. Same type of mentality going forward. Now just a little bit more extreme because we can use your skin to hide us and have masks and everything. Um, so we get these kind of child-parent dynamics. And then, of course... Welcoming you to the fold isn't going to last that long, not for uh, most parents, and it is the fall of the satellite, which again is kind of our reflect back to the premiere episode, tying us in time-wise uh, with the giant fall of the satellite, the flaming sky, which seems to send the walkers into a little bit of chaos. You'd fire a noise everywhere, which way are you supposed to go? And kind of interesting here where we have like, it looks like we have two um, herds kind of starting to meld. Um, then the fire lights up, the walkers start to go crazy, our sister mom kind of loses it. Can't totally blame her when you've lost a kid and you're seeing a walker with a baby carrier on it. Yeah, that's going to bring up those memories. It can inspire you to go and lash out pulls off her mask and just attacks Alpha. It is your fault that I lost my child. Which it is, because Alpha ordered her to put the kid down. So, yeah. <laughs> Effectively, it is. Um, but this is where we see the, the other effects of the other sister, who have been trying so much to get the one to come into line. You can't threaten us. Uh, you can't, uh, you know, uh, you can't risk our place in the society here in survival. And as they see this world, this is, this is what they have to live in. Uh, so the sister makes the sacrifice of jumping in as Beta is trying so much to get to Alpha. It's the sister that's able to get in, throw the one sister off for the walkers to all attack and pull Alpha out. So we get Alpha saved by this new sister who is to be uh, uh, coined Gamma. So now we have three names coming around. We have Alpha, Beta, and the new girl Gamma, who has cast aside her own flesh. It's just the real strength when you're able to cast away your own blood. Again, we're, we're sort of tying in this relationship between parent and child and love and loss. Um, that by sacrificing your own blood, that has made you stronger, that has shown that you are committed to the Whisperer lifestyle, and therefore able to get this new nomenclature of Gamma. Uh, which Beta isn't entirely too happy on, because he really sees what's going on. And we have that great core of encounter as Liddy has wandered off and Beta discovers that, or the Ga Alpha has wandered off, and Beta discovers that Alpha has set up a whole shrine to Lydia, with her bunny and everything. Um, as he'd urged to want her to come back. So again, as much as Alpha is inspiring everyone to feel nothing as the walkers do, to be able to sacrifice your own blood, that that shows your true strength and commitment to the cause, Alpha herself is not able to do it. Um, which is going to be our big dynamic, because like I mentioned in the opener, we've got some conflicts going on. The group is already starting to fracture. Beta has already warned that the group, that the, the pack is having some, some fractures. And even when the sister is kind of thrown back after, after being 
accepted and, and okayed by Alpha in the darkened place. When she returns, we have that one whisper that comes up and it's just like, yeah, you know, the, the cows and everything, we can get back and go. We already see amongst the whispers that there is the vision of Hilltop, of seeing a world where you don't have to walk with the dead, that you can have tomatoes. Come on, tomatoes? And possibly meat. I don't know if they have cows, but they got milk. They got they got they don't have to wear dead skins around them. They don't walk around with walkers and smell all that and eat worms. How how can you fight against that? And that's going to be the real challenge, I think, going forward, because not only is Alpha going to have to hide from everybody else the fact that Lydia's alive, which is gonna be really easy to see if Lydia just walks forward into any of the battle scenes. That that's going to cause conflict. The pack is going to see that Alpha doesn't have the strength, same strength that she demands from other people. That's already going to cause fractures. But that's only going to be amplified by the fact that they have seen a world that is different. A world that Alpha says cannot exist. And yet it does. And yet there are people that are making that happen. So the dynamic going forward, I think, is going to be really exciting, seeing as, as the, the, we're going to have an internal fracture amongst the Whispers, and I think that's what's eventually going to cause their downfall. And I think they established that right here. And the end of the episode ties in directly, of course, with the end of last week's episode, which I have to say, while it upset me last week, further upset me uh, this week. Reason being... We get to see the moments right before Alpha steps out onto the ridge and sees Carol as she's walking, of course, with the rest of the Whispers and all the Guardians and Walkers and such. And she sort of walks and steps away, and that's how we get that sort of dual meet-up stare-down of the two sides. And it's a great big shot where we have, well, I guess for you guys, Alpha down here and, and Carol up here, and we see the whole empty ridge, but... Alpha just walked away from a giant group of guardians, of walkers. We should start to see them. And in fact, if we had, that might have tied in more of, of what grabbed Carol's attention. If she was on the ridge and starting to walk away and she sees the ruffles of movement and turns and then Alpha comes out and then maybe the walkers start to come out, to me that would tie into, okay, that's what Alpha, that, that's what Carol saw in the eyes. It was just, it was the movements of the trees. It was this large group shuffling her way and not just alpha and yet when they have the chance this episode to show us that larger picture they don't they still just ended up being alpha all by herself and carol all by herself and no walkers or anything else around so i really wish part of it was like they, they could have fixed my response for last week and now again it's just you really did you just ignored everything else going on just so you could get these big stare across the canyon scene between these two sides. And yes, it's impressive and it sets us up to our final encounter, which, like I said, I was hoping it was going to be this week, but it's going to be next week uh, between these two groups. I just, I just wish it was more organically, naturally done and not manufactured. And that's really the only part of this episode that really felt manufactured. So it was kind of a bummer way of ending things out when they could have made things so much better. All right, so that will go ahead and wrap us up for next week. So, yes, where we should finally see the big encounter, like I said, I was hoping to see this week, uh, between the Whispers and our communities, the sort of face-off. They crossed into territory. Are they going to have to pay? Will Alpha understand that there was a plunging satellite? She saw it herself, and they had to put out a fire, which was dangerous to everybody. Probably not. Uh, Alpha does not seem to be the understanding type. Uh, but that should kick us off into the full encounters and really seeing uh, where the next stage of battle is going to be. So I am really looking forward to seeing that, but we're going to have to wait a week for it. So, bummer. Anyway, but that will go ahead and wrap us up for now. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me with these reviews. And if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, and comments, throw them down in the section below. What did you guys think about this episode? What did you like about the flashback with Lydia? Did you think the whole sister-mom thing worked out well for you? And Beta as an establishment. Actually, let me know what you guys think. Who is Beta protecting? Brother? Lover? 
someone else. Again, I don't think it could be his child from the comments between Alpha and Beta afterwards, but what do you guys think? Go ahead and throw your thoughts down in the section below. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Darren Jakes. Please subscribe. We got all of this season. Final season of uh, Mr. Robot just kicked off. Looking really good. And of course, The Mandalorian. Star Wars series coming up uh, next month, November 12th. You'll catch all those reviews if you're a subscriber. Do that by clicking this button right here. And we'll go ahead and throw up a couple of our latest reviews right here for you to check out. So, that's going to be it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.